you know, assignment, that's what we're going to do. So by any chance, if you have, if you need some help, you can always ask any of my students or even myself, uh, we can also help you up with that, okay? And finally, based on all these things, why you're going to need to come here is to improve your competitiveness and opportunity. You have to be able to compete with your fellow students. So if other people are getting A, you're going to be getting A plus. That's a very good reason to, uh, to be here. Now, some of those career opportunities that make a whole lot of money, you know, that, you know, uh, that here, one of them I'm biased because I'm talking about engineering. I'm gonna talk about what I know. A person who designs, builds, and maintains engines, machines, or public work. That's not only what engineers do. There's so many other things that engineers do. And uh, some of the you know, uh, examples of those departments include, but not limited to industrial and systems engineering, very, very important department. Electrical and computer science, mechanical, you have civil, you have uh, chemical, biomedical, you have medicine, you have pharmacy. So any of these amongst all that, like I said in the red uh, um, note there, this program is not for only engineering career. So any other STEM career, you know, you can always use in the concept we're gonna teach you guys, okay? So this is very important. Now talking about, you know, career, you go to school, you need to get a job. But what thing I tell people is that you have to select what you like doing. And another thing, what will give you money to, to be comfortable. And if you look at the chart here, you will see that the, uh, the prediction that they did is where the majority of the new jobs coming in, in the next 20 to 30 years will come from the STEM related fields. They already said, in fact, it's gonna be more than that, you know? So that's why it is important for you guys to take it serious, uh, also have fun taking it serious, yeah? So what I'm gonna do without talking too much because uh, I have to give time for Joshua to talk about the projects. I'm gonna show you some links that we did uh, of what we did the last two years. This is the first one is on, is in uh, the 2018. After that, uh, they are very brief, so don't worry about that. So I don't want to go to 2019. So, can you hear it? Yeah, uh, you can hear it, but they can't see it. So you probably just want to hit escape and then uh -huh. go to the browser. Just hit escape and go to your web browser. Escape? Yeah, just. Um, just switch from the PowerPoint presentation. We're still seeing the PowerPoint presentation. From what? We're still seeing the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, okay. So where do I go to? So just, just end the PowerPoint presentation and then go to your browser. Is it better now? Okay, then go to your browser. Can you bring up your browser? I'm in the browser. Oh, okay. Um, we're still seeing your PowerPoint presentation. Uh, probably want to minimize it exactly. How about this? Uh, can you, I'm not, I'm not seeing the browser yet. I'm still seeing your PowerPoint. Um, maybe I just close it. Oh, okay. Is it okay now? 
You can share your screen. You have to share your screen. I'm trying to go over it a different way. My boiling is spaghetti, and I'm um, playing it on the phone. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay, let me start it from the beginning. into their curriculum, you know, and, and we feel uh, that that is good to uh, start this young. The purpose of this study was to show how Java is popularized. This is a 21st century study of all technology from 19 to many days ago. This information made the really big impact on human nature. And now as people learn to about why it's important, this was to find recycled materials and create a moving model of a car. So for our, our, our hypothesis, So can you increase the, the volume? Also try to increase the volume from your laptop. You are at 100% here. And they get exposed to young college students who are closer in age to them than we are, who can show them that college is the way to go. Um, that was the, uh, yeah, so let's look. If I had to describe summer camp in one word, it
I'm trying to bring the other one down. Now I'm trying to stop the coming. Yes, Joshua. So I'm going to open up the, how do I stop the, um, the music? I guess you just, you could just stop that and then open the PowerPoint. So I just. Uh... Yeah, that's not okay. So I'm going to be sharing the. Um, this. Can you see it now? Yes. The, the link, right? Yeah. Okay, due to lack of time, uh, maybe we have to postpone the 2019 link and watch it probably during the camp or during the last day of the presentation. But at least everybody has the um, uh, general idea of what this program is all about. Although, like you see, you saw, the uh, program was face-to-face, -face, but in this case now, it's this. so you're still going to be seeing some of these uh, uh, issues with communication, but at the end, you see, you know, we're going to make it right. So um, if Joshua are ready, I think uh, you can continue with the rest of the uh, presentation. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'll just tell you to hit next when uh, I'm done with uh, a particular slide. I can't hear you. I'll just tell you to hit next when... Okay. With, uh, Unless you want me to give you control? Uh, okay. You, you can also give me control. Okay, go ahead. I'm fat. Let me be doing the next. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, good day, everybody. My name is Joshua, like uh, Dr. Agua has rightfully said. And uh, here is just uh, the program schedule. Uh, so this program is going, is going to be running for five weeks, with July 4th being the exception since it's more, it's a, uh, you know, a uh, public holiday. So every week we're gonna be having two sessions. So uh, I'll briefly go through all what each uh, session uh, entails. And due to the lack of time, I'll try to speed up because we should have been done like uh, six minutes ago. So from nine to 9.20 today, we're to have the camp introduction and logistic, which, uh, you know, is being given by Dr. Agua. And then uh, we're meant to break out into sessions for both the middle school and high school since uh, we have uh, both uh, schools here. And for the middle school, we'll be dealing with uh, descriptive statistics and for the high school, we'll be dealing with uh, regression analysis. And also we are going to be introducing you guys and I'm sure most of you or some of you might have uh, heard about CODAP, which is the Common Online Data uh, Analysis Platform, which is a really, really wonderful tool that will actually help students get to understand the nitty gritties behind uh, whatever analysis they actually perform. And then uh, we're gonna have a, a 30 minutes break from 10.30 to 11 a.m. And that's gonna happen for each of the weeks uh, to, to be precise. And from 11 to 11.15, we're gonna have also like a continuation of the practical sessions with uh, each of the schools. and. From 11.15 to 11.45, we'll be having a virtual tour on uh, sustainable energy and smart cities. So students get to know how interconnected the, their cities are due to you know, the boom of technology that we have right now. And then uh, for the last 15 minutes of the camp, we'll be having a Kahoot session, uh, which just gives, uh, tends to ask for like a summary of what we've all learned uh, throughout the entire day. And then, for the next week, uh, we still have the same uh, outline. So from 9 to 9.30, we'll be 
looking at artificial intelligence and uh, automated vehicles. And we know artificial intelligence is just uh, the ability to tell machines to do stuff. And we're trying to see what connection does this have with uh, vehicles. Now we can see we have uh, smart cars that you could be driving and you have lane assisted vehicles. If you want to, if you kind of like swerve out of your lane, it's kind of like you, you feel this vibration in your car telling you to actually align your steering wheels properly. And also we have a practical session on that. And in, for 30 minutes, we're gonna have a brain teaser just to you know make everybody uh, come alive after the end of the session. And like I said, July 4th is gonna be, there's gonna be no camp session because of the holiday. And then July 11th, we'll be introducing uh, the Verizon volunteers to come uh, speak about internet and network communication in which I'm strongly sure they're gonna tell us about what 5G is all about since that is the new thing coming out now. Goodbye to 4G, welcome 5G. And then you have the break as well, 30 minutes break. And from 11 to 11.30, uh, Itu and I will be giving uh, a presentation on how to uh, present the information and findings. And also immediately after the slides, uh, I'm gonna show us like a draft layout as to how the kids are to uh, present your project and your findings as well, just to give you guys, because it's just gonna be like a prep for you to start uh, what you've already, uh, what you've chosen as your uh, project. Because at the end of the day, we'll be having a, a project for the kids to submit. And also we'll be having a Kahoot section as well. And then for the last day of camp, uh, we'll be having keynote speakers from Verizon uh, by the name of uh, Brianna Ellison. And also, since I said we'll be having a, a, a project presentation, uh, we'll be having judges as well from the same Verizon. Uh, and the judges are gonna be Brian, uh, Brianna Ellis, Tupac Hunter, and Anthony uh, Magnan. And we'll have the break session and then we share awards and certificates. Uh, next slide, bro. And since we all know that uh, all good deeds needs a uh, reward. So uh, we'll be giving out uh, awards to the first place, second place, and uh, the third place winner. So the, for the first place, we'll be having uh, the first uh, runner up, or the first place position is gonna be having uh, EV3 Lego uh, Mindstorm. The second uh, place winner is gonna get a uh, Teledron, and the third place winner is gonna get an Amazon gift card. So this is just to kind of like, you know, motivate the students to want to do more. So uh, the next slide. So the next slide is basically talking about the project. So for this year, we'll be giving out five different projects. So the first uh, project is gonna be building a, a combination lock, uh, lock uh, box, basically more like a deposit, a deposit box. So the thing, the concept behind this is to kind of like bring out uh, students uh, imaginative thinking as well to kind of like create their own uh, deposit box where you could save your jewelries, where you could save uh, important documents in case you don't want to take it to the bank. And it could be uh, more like a, you know, a ground for students to save their money as well. If that is what they would like to do, you could save that personally without you know, using all your uh, money to get pizza or ice cream you could cultivate the habit of saving. And below is also the link, but we're not gonna go through that. I'm sure this will be, we're gonna provide you guys with uh, a template of this on uh, via email, which is gonna be shown to the parents. And the next slide. Uh, so the second one is a building with our kids, architecture our kids. So I'm sure some of the students here will have a flair for designing. So this is just to bring out the same imaginative, uh, you know, attributes in the students. So if you love to design and you would like to be an, ar uh, an architect someday, this is a good project for you to also uh, delve into. And you, uh, and, uh, the links here shows tutorial as to how to, you know, start and, you know, develop this, uh, whatever building you would like to uh, design. And then the next slide. Sorry, I'm rushing too fast because we're way uh, behind time. And uh, the next project is going to be building a, a hydraulic. Josh, you have uh, till 8.35. Till 8.35? Yeah. So you have the schedule changed a little bit. So you're okay. Oh, okay. All right, then. 
So building a hydraulic my, my, my thirty five. I'm sorry. Thirty five. Okay. Uh, hydraulic powered robotic uh, arm. So uh, this is also. I'm sure all the students here have at one point been to like a warehouse and they've seen uh, cranes, pumps, and also construction site where you see tractors. So this is just to also give you more like a little bit of the principle behind how uh, pneumatic equipment work. So you see how the tractors are protrude out and come, comes back in. This is the concept, but now you're applying this on a robotic arm to try and move things from place to place. So we also provided like a resource for you to go and also check to kind of like buttress whatever knowledge you have. And then for the next project, uh, this is uh, a fun and interesting one, which is more like a soda fountain machine with three different drinks. And I know that so many people like to have a good time, cool off, maybe you play sport, maybe uh, baseball, uh, soccer, volleyball, or whatever you play, and you want to just get refreshed, even if it's just to drink a cup of water. So this is more like you trying to uh, mimic what you see in a uh, fast food rest, uh, restaurants where they have uh, the fountains. So one of the advantage of this is that it could also help you avoiding spillage when you want to take your drink. So this is going to be a, a fun experiment. And if you want to do this, uh, we have the resource in which you can, uh, you know, look through to help with this. And then the next slide. So this is the final project, which is going to be on uh, data analysis and the use of uh, CODAP, which is the common, uh, common online data analysis platform. And the concept behind this is for you to use what has been, uh, what you've learned throughout this uh, period uh, during the camp. And uh, we want to take a relation, see a relationship between the distance traveled and the airfare. So one of the possible websites you could check it like MapQuest, uh, Travelocity, an airline website, and I'm sure the parents can help with this. So this is just for you to kind of like see the relationship, uh, like uh, I've already said, and your resource is going to be access to internet with the permission of your parents as well. So I think this uh, wraps up uh, the uh, project and the introduction to uh, the camp slides. And so I would like to share my screen just to give you guys uh, a little bit about information about the project instructions. So give me one second. Give me one second, let's see. Uh, I think we can share now. It's asking me for changes. Uh, so can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay. So uh, this is both for uh, the students and parents in, included. Uh, so from June 20th to July 18th, you know, the children will uh, start should have started and finished working on their uh, selected take-home project. So uh, the written portion of the display should be completed, well-written and containing no uh, editing errors. Uh, we would also encourage you to assist your child uh, with this project, but the final project should reflect your children's creativity and efforts. So the following items need to be included in the PowerPoint presentation. So we need to see the title of the project, the purpose of the study, the hypothesis, like what do you think will happen uh, the materials used in the experiment. Uh, you also need, we also need to see the procedures, that's the step-by-step -step instructions to carry out the experiment, then also the results, uh, the data and what actually happened. And you also need to have a conclusive remark, which is, is your hypothesis true or false? It doesn't have to be true. That is why it's an hypothesis. And then why do you have that uh, result? So you could also follow this sketch that we kind of like, uh, we've kind of like given you so for week one you have to choose a topic to investigate and plan for your experiments and you can ask questions from the instructors uh e2 i and leslie uh on what is expected from the project you've selected so for the second week 
collect and organize your materials, set up and begin your project, and also begin to take pictures uh, for your daily uh, display as well. So because that's one way we can also track uh, your progress when you take pictures at each step that of the way you go. And then for the third week, you also need to continue your project uh, if necessary and begin working on your charts, your graphs, or other visuals, which will be helpful uh, during your uh, final oral presentation. And also uh, begin uh, working on your display board and complete your projects, recording uh, final notes and observations, which will include the lesson you learned because no, you can't do a project without, uh, you know, going through hiccups along the line. And also you need to complete your visuals and PowerPoint presentation. And for week four, you need to present your uh, project on the final program day and all projects will be presented online. And you can show a video or the demo of your work. That is also one of the reasons you need to kind of like document this. So uh, the, uh, there are guidelines for displaying your projects attached. So you may use a display board or you could use an ordinary uh, poster folding the sides to stand freely. To stand freely is not uh, necessary. So I could just give like a typical example. So take, for example, I want to know if there is starch found in potato. So the purpose of my research would be uh, just to detect the presence of starch in my potato. So the materials, so the material used for this study, given that I'm trying to see if uh, there is starch present in my potato, it's going to be the potato itself, uh, an iodine solution. Uh, I could also need like uh, a knife to kind of like dissect or cut the yam, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, so that's, that's it basically. And then for the oral presentation, this is also a format you should uh, use, you know, stating uh, your results, your conclusion, uh, which entails your uh, hypothesis and the likes. So uh, this is gonna be all for, uh, for now. And also, I would like to Joshua. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, just to correct what he said earlier, it's actually going to be a PowerPoint presentation, not a poster board presentation. So, everyone is going to um, try to learn how to use Microsoft PowerPoint, and that's what you'll be using for your presentation. So, somewhere within maybe the um, third week or the yeah or the second week of the camp. We will teach you guys how to do a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, as that's what you'll be using to present your um, Bootcamp project. Is that clear? Okay. All right, Joshua, you can continue. Okay. Uh, so uh, we will also be providing the parents with uh, the for a Google Drive where uh, the homeworks and the project selections would uh, take place as well, so that it could view uh, the files. Also. Uh, Zoom conference link will also be uh, kind of like distributed on a weekly basis so that everyone can have uh, access to this. And you guys have a, a deadline between this, uh, this Saturday and next Saturday to have chosen your uh, desired project and with the help of your parents, of course. So I guess this wraps up uh, the logistics and introduction to Okay. For the sake of those uh, that came late, again, my name is Celestine Agawa from Wayne State University, and welcome to the 2020 um, uh, SOP, that is the Summer Program, Outreach Program, where the focus here is on STEM. Um, we have uh, very good instructors, a two, Joshua and Leslie, who will be helping me out throughout this uh, um, camp. And uh, what you've just seen, uh, 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 just the logistics and the information. If you have any questions, please send us email through the SOP uh, um, address, or you can also contact any of us uh, with any uh, questions. Now, I got the information that some people had issues here in the video. Uh, so what I might do is to repeat the video during the break time just for the sake of time. And uh, again, some of these times are not cast on stone, so there might be some differences, five minutes, one, you know, two minutes, so just bear that in mind, all right? So 
after saying this, uh, we'll hand over to uh, who takes the next item. Uh, okay, yeah. So I'm currently trying to assign. So from here, we're going to break you guys into two. Um, for the middle school, there's going to be a different breakout session for them. And for the high school students, there's going to be a different breakout session for them. So I'm just trying to work on that now. And you all should be receiving um, a notification on the Zoom platform um, based on where you've been assigned to, if you're middle school or high school. So just click on join and then go to that breakout room. So uh, just give me a minute to. So Donna is high school. Um, Michael, I know her. Are you here? Michael? Maybe it's on mute. You can also always check the participants. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think he's using his um I don't think he's using his phone or something, so uh, let's see. I don't know her. I think he's here. Okay. Uh, you can unmute all of them, so let's that will help. Do you want me to unmute all of them? Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to send them here. Um, Chelsea and Chelsea O'Hacker, are you here? Did you say Chelsea? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Okay, so are you middle school or high school? High school. Okay, cool. Um, how about your brother, Jordan? Is he here? No, Jordan is not here. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, uh, De Young, De Young, can you hear me? De Young. The young, the young is um, Jaden, you're in middle school, right? Jaden, you're in middle school, right? Uh, I don't think okay. Jaden. Eric, Eric, can you hear me? Oh, um, Eric, can you hear me? Thank you. Uh, let's see. Are you in middle or high school?
Eric. Huh? Are you in middle or high school? I'm in middle school. All right, so I think that's it. So you're going to receive um, a notification now. So just click on join and go to that breakout room. Dion, Young. Okay, he hasn't clicked. I think De Young hasn't clicked on his. Um, okay, he has clicked on it now. That's good. Then, uh, so I think. Is his speaker on mute? No, he has clicked on it now. He has joined. Okay. He has joined the um, uh, high school session. So I'm gonna okay. go through with them. Um, I think the people we just have here now are just their parents. So I think we have Engineer you know, Pascal here and then um, Mr. Noha. So um, let's see. I quit. Okay, I'm just going to assign um, Pascal to the Engineer Pascal to the middle school section if you want to just stay there with the kids and then. Uh, where did you assign me? Um, I think you can you can join any of the rooms. Okay. So you and Leslie can join any of the rooms. Hello, Leslie. <laughs> Are we in the same room? How do I get into my own classroom? <laughs> Are they underneath? Are they what? I mean, how do I get into each of the rooms or sessions? Let me Actually, I don't know. Let me ask um, it to. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't see any option to switch. I think it is the one that can move us. You can get to him. Are you able to get into any session? No. I don't see the option of switching to another yeah. breakout room. Can you send him? I, I just sent him a, an email about the session. Do you want me to text him? Yeah. Can I can you ask him how somebody can? I hope that they know they have the option. Yeah. One of the session rooms. I'm in the session rooms. I'm not here. Okay, I just texted him. Okay. Well, we don't have this option underneath. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see it in my screen. Yeah. I hope they did not cut me and you off. <laughs> oh yeah, hello. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 a high school student, but I think I was in the like the middle school students room, so I think I was showing another Zoom meeting. Oh. Like, I was in the restroom and I didn't like hear the oh, instructions. Okay. Yeah. So let's, in fact, we're trying to contact it to, to, um, we'll, let's see. Can you send him, can you send him um, a text uh, on the chat? Uh, to who? To just go on the chat, uh, um, on the chat icon. Yeah. Click on that and send uh, him uh, that you, you need to be uh, changed to another. Uh, to, to whom? Sorry. To A2. 
H one of the H U. Yeah, I, I I can I can chat to him right now. Yeah, you you can always open the chat and just send it that he will read it or somebody else will read it. Oh okay. Yeah. It's the high school to me. Yeah, even we are even having issues with the. Uh, so Leslie, what do you get? He hasn't responded. Okay. I'm gonna try to just Google it. Yeah? I'm gonna try to Google how to switch. Let me know when you find out. Uh, I, hi. So, um, for some reason, the internet stopped working on my laptop, so I'm out of the group. So, you're on mute. Okay, you can log back in. I can't log back into the group, though. I can only log back in here. Oh, even myself, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> Okay, so we are trying to contact the uh, two. Okay. Send him. Um, what happened to your internet? Because mine is working. Yeah, for everyone else is working. For mine, it just, I don't know, it's cut off. Now, can you send him, uh, send him uh, a, a message on the chat? Yeah. And see, and he's, in a, he's in a different group, though. Huh? He's in a different group. No, he's in high school. I'm not in the high school group right now, though. I'm out of the group. I'm saying. No. So you cannot send any message to somebody from somewhere else? Mm -mm. Me, I'm not in any group now, so that's an issue. Which group are you in? So Leslie, what's going on? Nothing, I can't find it. I'm still looking. Yeah. Because you need to be in one of those sessions, right? Yeah. Wow. Like, it never showed my screen like E2 was assigning me to a breakout room. So, um... Did you uh, get logged out? What? Did you get logged out? I can't join the group again. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I, I also have to join the high school. Uh, young, where, where are you at now? High school? No, I'm not in high school group right now. He's like us, like nowhere, like. Yeah, you know, like, I, don't I don't know. Yeah, okay, don't worry, we'll get this off. You know, it's uh, transitioning. I was in the middle school one, but I'm in I'm a high school, so I got out of there and I just came here. Did you leave or did E2 try to kick you out? No, I just left. Did you, okay. Yeah. Jordan, Adana. Adana, can you hear me? Adana. Adana, I just sent you the um, join link for the high school. Um, Jordan, were you with the middle school? Y yeah. Okay, so um, check, you should have the, um, you should have the link that would take you to the, the middle school. Check, you should see somewhere that says join over there. Adana. Adana. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just sent you the link to join the, the okay, good. I just sent you the link to join the middle school. Sorry, What's the high school. Like the middle school? High school, high school, high school. Oh, okay, high school. Accepted. Thank you. Yeah. But how do I join it? Um, Jordan, check your, you should see something that says join somewhere there. Because I just sent it to you. Oh. Oh. Have you seen it? Anything they join there? No, I don't actually. Okay. Do you want to um end it and then come back in so that I can send it to you again? Okay. Or hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna try this. So I'm gonna move you to the high school and then I'll move you back to the middle school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see, can you see the join button now? Okay, let me just check the whole thing. Okay. It's nothing, am I supposed to look in chat or whatever? Um, yeah, try looking in chat. Oh no, um, click on the participants. Okay, I clicked on it. Yeah, did you see anything that says join there? No, it doesn't. Okay, so do you want to um, exit out and then come back in? Just end the meeting and come back in so I could um, do that all over again. Okay, okay, wait, what did you say? Can you end the meeting? Okay. Yeah. So leave? Yeah, just leave <laughs> and then come back in. Two? Yeah. Yeah, you need to get uh, session two. Everybody. Oh, on the couch. Yeah, I'm bringing them back here right now. Okay, because already she was starting the talk before the. Uh, so. Jordan. Is everyone here now? Um, there. Hold a second. Just hold on a second. I have a couple okay. of. Okay.
name section? I think done. Did everybody? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so I think everyone is back here now. And the main okay. So, um, yeah, Leslie, you can go ahead now. Okay, hi, hi everyone again. I'm going to talk about smart cities. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can everyone see this website? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So basically, yes. a smart city is any city that uses um, communi communication um, technology. Um, Basically, the, the, these cities are made to increase the operational safety as well as to share the information and to improve the quality of the government services and the citizen welfare. The basic goal of a smart city is to have a clean and sustainable environment in which an application of a smart solution is applied. So I'm going to show you this video. Uh, Leslie? Um, Leslie, the, the audio is not coming on. Why is not working? Yeah, the audio. Oh. So when you share your screen, if you cancel the sharing, when you share your screen, there should be a place that says you should um, click on the audio or allow the audio to come in. Or if you're having a problem with that, I think you want to minimize that. Your email is showing. Oh, really? I'm, I'm lost. Can't even make this big. Yeah, just your. Yeah. Can you minimize your web browser? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so here, right? Yeah, did you see where it says you should click on the sound or something? Why does it supposed to say? For you to click on the sound, you see that? No. <laughs> okay. Um. Give me one minute. Let me. Uh. Let's see. So, can you stop sharing your screen and then I'll share mine and just play the video so that they can hear the sound? Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Did you know? And can you hear the sound? Yeah. All right. Yes. That the average person uses about 150 gallons of water per day, or that it takes more water than electricity to turn on a single light bulb? Hi, I'm Darnell Head with Discovery Education, and today we're talking about the connection between energy and water and why it is so important to conserve both of these resources, not just for our generation, but for future generations as well. We're here in San Jose, California, meeting with the team at ITRON, where they're using their math, science, and engineering skills to develop technology that will actually help us to better manage our resources and power us into the future. Because we're actually going to get a chance to take a look at a few of ITRON's inventions and learn how their technology is transforming cities into smart cities, creating an environment that is beneficial for the living creatures both on land and in the oceans. So what do you say? Shall we get going? founded over 
40 years ago by utility executives and engineers to help them to collect electricity, gas, and water information more efficiently. Over the years, we've continued to innovate and invest in technology to increase the efficiency and the amount of data that we can collect about how and when people are using electricity, gas, and water. It turns out that that's really important because we waste a lot of these critical resources in how we deliver electricity, gas, and water and how they're used. And by studying these patterns, we can all be more efficient stewards of these critical resources. In the United States, we take for granted that when we turn the light switch on, the lights come on, and when we open the tap, clean water comes out. That's not true everywhere else in the world. We need to be aware of how scarce these resources are so that we can provide safe and reliable power to people around the world and clean drinking water to everyone. We actually feel that the way that energy and water are managed is going to shape the 21st century. like ITRON has a lot of really big ideas. You know, we've been receiving a lot of student questions and we love to hear more. So continue to send those over to at Discovery Ed using hashtag SmartCitiesVFT. And I'm checking it out now and it looks like quite a few of you are actually asking to see some of the examples of the technology that ITRON has been working on. Let's head over to talk with Tom Erseg. He'll be able to show us around. This is Tom Erseg, and Tom has one of the coolest jobs here. He actually gets to show off a lot of the incredible things iTron has created over the years. So Tom, this looks like some sort of technical command center. You gotta tell us, what are we looking at here? Yeah, the, thanks for coming. I uh, really appreciate having you here today. Uh, this is a, it's a pretty amazing facility. We yeah. use it to uh, demonstrate the, some of the various use cases of our technology. A lot of people know some of what we do, almost nobody knows everything we do. And so we built this uh, innovation center so that we could really highlight a lot of the uh, things that we do with the network. Well, that's awesome. And we have a lot of students tuning in right now, and so I'm sure they're all pretty curious. What's behind us? What are we looking at here with this map? So this is an example of streetlight control. Uh, so we actually control streetlights for some of the most iconic cities in the world, including places like Paris and wow. Copenhagen and uh, Chicago. And so this is the software that we use for, uh, for being able to control those devices. I'm sure our kids out there would love to see and hear an example. How does this actually work? What is the benefit to it? Sure. Uh, so, you know, like I say, we control streetlights all over the place and different cities and different areas have different needs. Uh, one really interesting one is in Florida. Florida. They have a lot of beaches where baby sea turtles hatch. Yeah. And uh, sea turtles somehow know when they pop up out of their shell to go look at the moon, right? And they walk towards the moon and uh, out into the water and they swim I, away. I see that happen, it's really cool. It is, uh, but unfortunately, if there are street lights that are on, that street light is really bright as well. It and is. so sometimes the baby sea turtles get confused and they walk towards the street light instead of towards the ocean. That can't be good. No, they end up walking out into the road and right. You know, it's dangerous. Right, yep. So then the street light, as it goes down, it allows the sea turtle to only see what they should see, which is the moonlight, right? That's right. That makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like you've been able to have a really good impact on the sea turtles. Uh, so the sea turtles are now no longer walking out into the streets uh, and uh, putting themselves in danger. They're able to swim out into the ocean and you know, do what sea turtles do. That's actually pretty incredible. Yeah, that's right. And that's just one example of some of the great things that we can do with, uh, with network streetlights. Awesome, and, and I imagine that is probably saving a lot of energy as well for the community? That's right, so prior to using uh, LED streetlights with network controls, municipalities would spend something like 40% of their energy budget running the streetlights. Now, using this kind of technology, that number's dropped by 60 to 70%. Man, you think about why that could be important. If we're saving money by conserving energy, then think about all the other great things that our cities can invest those funds in, right? That's right. Yeah, and once the, once the network is in place, you can use it for all sorts of other things. So I'm wondering, can you actually show us an example with our demo here? I sure can. So here in the Innovation Center, we're controlling streetlights, and we'll take a look at the energy savings that comes from being able to dim a streetlight. Uh, so right now, this particular streetlight is running at 100% uh, of its max light level, and it's currently drawing 44 watts of power. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dim it. I'm gonna take it down to about 20%. And there we go. And just wow. that quickly, the street light has already dimmed. Yeah, it did. It was almost instantaneous. That's right. 
Now, how, what is the wattage that is being drawn now? So right now it's in the process of retrieving that data. It'll take just a second to, to pull everything back. So the street light is already dimmed. It's now just pulling back all of its information. Oh, now we can see it right here. So now we're drawing eight watts. Okay, so by dimming the street lights, you're actually able to save quite a bit of energy. Yeah, that's right. So just with this one example, by going from 44 watts to eight watts, we've dropped the energy consumption of that bulb by about 80%. That's amazing. It is. And uh, not only have we saved the energy, there are a lot of neighborhoods where uh, people are concerned about light pollution. If yeah. the street lights are really bright and they're shining in their bedroom windows at night, uh, it keeps them up. And so now we can individually control particular street lights that might be bothering people. I can see how that can be very useful for our students at home when they're thinking about the street lights that are just outside their windows or outside their doors. That has to be super useful. Absolutely. Tom, this is really cool, and thank you so much for showing us around. And I know our students are eager to see a lot more that's happening here. Is there anything else you can show us while we're here? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go check it out. Great. Tom, what do we have right here? What we see here is a playback of an actual lightning storm that blew through the city of Chicago in 2011. The city of Chicago has a lightning strike detection network. They can figure out when and where lightning hits all across the city. And we work with the local utility uh, to enable them to read their meters and to improve the uh, control of the grid. So the yellow icons represent where the lightning hits. The red icons come from the meters when the power fails. And the green icons tell us when the power gets restored. We're going to see literally thousands of lightning strikes and power outages blow all through the city. And you'll notice that these outages are immediately restoring themselves. So in most cases, customers don't even know the power went out. The grid just fixed itself. Wow, and I know I've been through my fair share of power outages lately, so I would love to have this technology in my city. And Tom, I think it's also pretty clear that you've been a part of a lot of incredible projects here at iTron, and I'm actually eyeing another one just across the room there. What do you say we go check that out next? Sounds great, let's take a look. What we're looking at here is an example of our developer program. So we work with partner companies all over the world. And it's really important to us that our partners are able to get their devices to run on our network as easily as possible. So this particular station is an earthquake simulator. One of our partner companies makes a seismic detector. They can figure out how strong an earthquake is. And using our technology for communications, we're able to tell other pieces of equipment what's happened. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate an earthquake and the earthquake sensor is going to tell the gas shutoff valve that it happened and the gas shutoff valve will then shut off the gas flow and that'll help prevent fires. So what you're saying is this machine right here can actually create an earthquake? Absolutely. Well, let's do that. Let's make an earthquake. Sounds great. Let's do it. So that looks like about a magnitude six there, right? It does. And I'm hearing something actually happening right here. What is that? So that's the gas meter or the gas valve itself shutting off the flow of gas. Wow, Tom, that sounds like a really key safety feature. That's right, and this all happened automatically. Nobody had to make a decision. The network itself just figured out what was going on and, uh, and shut the gas off. And that keeps everyone safe. That's right. You know, Tom, when, and thinking about all of this, when I, I look at pulling all this technology to, together, right, the street lights, the lightning demo, and now this, I got to imagine that this must do something pretty amazing for cities. That's correct. And really the key is that the, the notion of a smart city is different for every city. And so having a network that can do a lot of different things and that it's easy to add devices to makes the smart city of the future much more powerful. Tom, what would students find most surprising about working here? I think the big thing is just the breadth of what it is we do, right? It's not just, we don't just write software or build little hardware devices. We make entire systems. And the really great thing about the systems we make is that we're actually making the world a little better place, right? The grid's more reliable, the cities are smarter. And so the work you do is really meaningful and important to society. That makes a lot of sense. So why is it important to actually create smart cities? As uh, population increases and global warming becomes more uh, prevalent and we have resource uh, scarcity issues, managing all of those resources more effectively is really key to making the world a better and more livable place. And the kind of technology that we're using here is uh, instrumental in making that happen. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And I'm sure our students at home watching right now, they can see that as well. Thanks, Tom. 
Now that we've seen how a lot of this technology has been developed, let's go talk about what it takes to make a smart city. Marina Donovan, who can help shed some light on exactly what it means for a city to be a smart city. Marina, so great to have you today. Thanks, Darnell. It's great to be here. So what does it mean for a city to be a smart city? A city that's a smart city is totally connected and it's using different types of software applications just like the applications on your phone. And ultimately, it's there to help improve the lives of citizens in that community. And these different applications can help with doing things like helping us monitor energy consumption and decreasing pollution. The, the applications will also help improve public safety through the use of video monitoring, um, adaptive street lighting, quicker emergency response, for example. Marina, how does it actually work? Let's take an example with a city. If they're trying to figure out what's happening with the air quality in the city, because that's a big concern for a lot of cities, they have different sensors and, and uh, monitors out there, and then they'll tell people, look, your pollution today is X, or your air quality today is, is this. And then that helps people make decisions on, hey, do we want the kids to go out and play today, or do we need to keep them inside? So we hear a lot about resilience. So what does it actually mean for a smart city to be a resilient city? Uh, resiliency is really important because a lot of times natural disasters or things just happen and you need to be able to quickly bounce back. Uh, like in that example that we saw with the lightning strike demonstration where that city was able to pinpoint where the strikes were happening and it was quickly able to restore power. So, and same things go for things like earthquakes, hurricanes, fires, that type of communications network is giving us more intelligence and it's helping us bounce back quicker. Marina, we know that ITRON really values education and we actually have quite a few students tuning in right now. Can you share with us all, what is ITRON doing to really support and educate the public on what we can do to become more resourceful? Yeah. Well, a lot of it has to do with what we're doing with the Discovery Education Conservation Program. Another key initiative we have underway is a program called Power Over Energy to help educate people all over the world on different best practices. Ultimately, the more informed and educated people are, the better decisions they make. What can students do in their own communities to make them more resourceful? Students can do a lot of things. I think the first thing students need to do is just be more aware of, of kind of how they live. Um, this generation, your generation, has such an opportunity to make a positive impact on our planet. So it's things like, hey, when you're brushing your teeth, don't have the water running for 10 minutes. Like, turn the water on, brush your teeth, turn the water off. Things like helping your parents recycle. All those things can be reused, reusing bags, things like that. All those things make a collective difference for the greater good. So speaking of our students, what are some opportunities for kids today that might be interested in a career in energy resource management? I think there's a lot of possibilities for, for a career for all of you in um, energy resource management. And it doesn't just have to be STEM related. Um, it could be other things that companies have, other jobs. So, uh, for example, I'm in marketing. You have to know how to communicate to your communities. And so that's either through visual or social media or PR. So uh, that's one possibility. If you're interested in, hey, what's happening to all that information out there and all those things connecting together, that could be a career in data analytics and just analyzing the information or analyzing the data and turning it into information. Or it could be a career in information technology and getting those technologies out there and managing them. So I think that there's tons of opportunities for all of you in this field. Follow something that you're passionate about, you know, whether it be energy conservation, sustainability for cities, and just kind of let yourself be drawn to that. And you'll learn about how a business works once you're in it. And when you're just starting out, you're just starting out. So no one's expecting you to know it all. You're, you're typically gonna start in a very, you know, entry level role. And you don't have to worry about that because you're gonna hopefully have great managers that are gonna show you and teach you. But ultimately, 
you are our future generation and you are gonna make our cities even better than they are today. Thanks, Marina. Can you imagine if all cities were smart cities? That would be awesome. It would. Big challenges like these often come along with really big problems. So next, we're going to talk about some of the biggest issues we face around the world when trying to conserve energy resources. I'm here now with Mark Heinbigner, who is eager to talk to us today about the issues the whole world is up against and why it is so important for us to act locally, but think globally. Mark, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Darnell. Thanks for being here. Of course. So we had an opportunity to really connect with a lot of the local impact, and we, we observed the, uh, the street lights, and we observed the lightning demo, but now we're all really wondering, what does this do to connect globally? What is the global impact? Global impact is, is extremely important, Darnell. So uh, if you look at look at population growth, right? So we're in, by 2030, we're gonna hit eight and a half billion people on, on Earth. A uh, hundred years ago, that was two and a half. By 2030 as well, two thirds of those people are gonna be living in cities. Uh, that's a lot of people in a lot of concentrated areas, right? So in order for those cities to function as well as they possibly can, you gotta have electricity, you gotta have gas, you gotta have water, you gotta have critical services that you know bring uh, paramedics to people when they have, have an issue or police and fire, all these different things. Um, and the technology that we're putting in place helps to make that a reality. That makes a lot of sense. Now, can you tell us in what way is ITRON supporting across the global imprint to make sure that that happens, not just in the cities here where our students may be watching from, but also cities across the world? We have a lot of great technology that we're putting in place all over the world um, to, to combat a lot of really big global issues. So one of the big challenges facing our industry and facing, facing the world, really, um, is, is water loss, is waste, right? So leaks, things that, uh, you know, water that gets treated and is supposed to go and get used somewhere and just leaks out in the distribution system in the, in the pipes underground somewhere. And uh, that's just wasted water that's not not serving its impact. And as this population continues to grow, as more and more people move to cities and want to be you know, connected, uh, living together in these communities, those resources are gonna become more and more scarce. So Mark, I understand that you all are working on a project down in the Great Barrier Reef. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely, I mean, the Great Barrier Reef is a treasure. Um, there are thousands and thousands of species of fish and of coral living in a very diverse, very uh, unique ecosystem down there. And we have a customer in Australia near the Great Barrier Reef who's uh, putting in one of our networks. So some of the stuff that Tom showed you earlier, uh, different meters and leak sensing technology to make sure that as much of that resource is used by the people in the community as humanly possible. But the other thing that they have down there is they have monsoon seasons, they have torrential rains, and, and they have areas where all that water is collected before it goes back into the ocean. And so we're also putting in a um, water quality management system that's gonna help verify the contaminants and what's actually in that water, and if necessary, help clean it before it goes back into the ocean and could do damage to all of the thousands and thousands of species in the Great Barrier Reef. So Mark, we've been hearing from our students, and they've all been actually pretty surprised to learn that there's a connection between water and energy. Do you mind explaining that a little bit for everyone? Absolutely, there's a huge connection between energy and water, and those two resources are critical to life on Earth. Um, so when you produce electricity, uh, it takes a lot of water to be able to do that. So from generating steam to run turbines to you know actually generate the electricity, you know pumping oil, there's a lot of water used in that to get that up out of the ground keeping uh, electricity plants cool. Uh, that's a lot of water used in that. So, and then on the other side of that, you know, in order for us to have clean, drinkable water, there's a lot of electricity and gas that gets used to treat the water, to pump it out to our homes and neighborhoods. Um, there's, a, there's a very strong interdependence between energy and water. So what you're saying is we really can't have one without the other, right? That's right. So what I've learned so far from my time here at ITRON today is that you all are really on a mission to make something happen now, right? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? We are on a mission, and that mission is to create a more resourceful world, and that's one where we're using those energy and wa water resources to their fullest potential. We're not wasting uh, electricity, gas, and water. We're putting in a lot of the building blocks right now, but what's really exciting is the foundation that we're laying today are things that today's kids will be able to innovate on top of and create even better, stronger, solutions to manage electricity, gas, and water well into the future, making sure there's plenty for all. 
And Mark, what are some things that we can do in our own homes, in our own lives, on an everyday basis that can help? Well, uh, using energy efficient d devices and appliances. Um, when you're not using your phone, unplugging the charger from the wall. Um, you know, turning off lights when you leave a room. It's real simple, real basic stuff. But all that collectively adds up to a big change and a big difference that's really gonna go a long way for all of us. Wow, I know I can do my part to conserve energy, and I'm sure some of our students at home can use these tips as well. And if we all came together with these tips, how much energy could we actually save? The, the impact would be tremendous. If we all made little changes in our day-to-day -day lives, the cumulative effect of that would be, would be huge. It sounds like you're really invested in educating the public so that we all can understand what we can do to make a difference. It's part of our mission. And you know what? We've actually been receiving quite a few student questions. And students, feel free to send your questions to at Discovery Ed using hashtag SmartCitiesVFT. We would love to hear from all of you. So, do you want to answer a few of these questions? Absolutely, ask away. Awesome, so the first student question we have is, isn't water a renewable resource? Why do we have to conserve the amount that we use? Well, first off, water is not a renewable resource, um, and it's a very, very precious one. Even though three quarters of the, of the earth is covered in water, uh, less than 3% of that is drinkable, and about 2% of what is drinkable is locked in polar ice caps and, and, and ice shields. So uh, we have a very, very small amount of, of drinkable water that we actually have to work with. As we talked about earlier, as the as population continues to grow, uh, that water is becoming more and more precious, more and more people need it, and so we've got to absolutely conserve and not waste that very precious resource. That sounds great, Mark. Let's now go and talk with an iTron team member to learn what inspired her to pursue a career in energy resource management. Here now with me is Sapna Manier, who actually got into energy conservation through her studies in college. Sapna, what was it about your studies in college that really inspired you to want to make a difference? My lifelong goal has been to find a career where I can work with the public directly and make a difference to their lives. My education in STEM is really what gave me the opportunity to make this happen. I studied my bachelor's in pharmaceuticals in 2005, and I got my MBA in marketing in 2007. Let me make sure I got that correct. You actually studied medicine initially, and then went into a business route. Can you tell us and share with the students, how does that actually connect to energy and the space that you're working in now? I got my pharmaceutical education when I was back in India, and I had international experience working with patients' medication. but. Ultimately, it's about giving back to the community, helping the community, which is my core value, and that's what I always wanted to be focused on. When I moved to the Bay Area in California, I still had the opportunity to connect with technology because this is the technology hub, and I wanted to be connected and still make a difference to people's lives, and I saw the energy sector as a perfect opportunity to be able to do so. And when you think about energy conservation, energy efficiency, it, it's such a dynamic industry and it gives you immense opportunities to innovate, to transform the world when everything's so connected around you. I think that's really, really awesome, Sapna. And speaking of the, the tools and the technology that you all have developed and how it makes the world a better place, can you share, like, how does that actually work? Can you give us an example and what it does to actually make the world a better place? Yeah, absolutely. We came up with these NIC cards, which are the network interface cards and they come in different shapes and sizes. If you see, there's another NIC card lying right here. And these actually make dumb devices smarter. So earlier today, Tom showed us the lightning demo and how when there was a storm and power went out and then all of a sudden the power was regenerated again. And he shared that the utilities were right on top of that. And so if I understand correctly, this device here made that all possible. That is what made it all possible. And what advice would you have for the younger generation? Thing. If you have an interest in STEM, go for it. Pursue that interest. There's a lot of opportunities out there for you. And there's a lot of support system too. 
you will get the knowledge you will be able to use those abilities and innovate newer solutions that will benefit the world Sabna, so what advice would you have for young women who are interested in using their science and technology skills in a career there's people out there wanting to help women and change the world in different ways there's universities that are helping people uh, especially women in education and fostering that interest in math and science thanks so much sapna really enjoy having a conversation with you today thanks darnell appreciate your time and i really enjoyed speaking with you as well you know, we've heard some pretty incredible stories today, and I think it's pretty clear ITRON is on a mission to change the way we think about how we're using energy and water. In the United States, we take for granted that when we turn the light switch on, the lights come on, and when we open the tap, clean water comes out. That's not true everywhere else in the world. We need to be aware of how scarce these resources are so that we can provide safe and reliable power to people around the world and clean drinking water to everyone. I want to thank Marina, Mark, Sapna, and Tom, as well as all of the students who were able to send in questions today, and of course, the entire ITRON team for letting us take a look around the Innovation Center today. To learn more about Conservation Station and for access to free classroom resources, visit learntoconserve.com. All right, so back to you, Leslie. Okay, perfect. So just to finish this, um, we're gonna do like a fun game. Okay, I want everyone to use your phone or your laptop and go to this website and log in this info. I'm gonna wait like one or two minutes, then we'll start. I want to for you guys to log in. I hope everyone did learn a couple of Hi, things. Hi, wait. I think you need to wait. If, if you can turn off the music, the bag. Okay, good. Yeah, there's um, Leslie on the on the top right hand oh. side. You can see the, the speaker um, symbol there. Okay. Good. Thank you. Wait. Let me. Yeah, you share this thing. Just share your screen again and I'll tell you where to go. You can start logging into that uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Can you share your screen again? Like yeah, that? sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just going to use the sound. Okay. Good. Okay. So I hope um, everyone was able to learn a whole lot of um, things about STEM um, and all the other different um, non-STEM uh, areas, as you can see from the- uh, Very few people were on the uh, distant uh, two. Sorry? I encourage all of them to log in into this uh, Kahoot. Who's that? After 10 players. Yeah, we have 13, so we're looking to... I encourage them to all. Uh... Okay. 14. I think we should. <clears throat> okay, so then it's there. We should have a, probably have to, uh, let's see. Okay. Around 19 people. Uh, then that's a... Uh, come on, guys. We're still looking for four more people. <laughs> Going back and forth, 16, 17. Okay, so two more people. Yeah. Who, so, okay, so uh, let's see. Okay. Should I start now? 
Uh, hold on, hold on. I think one more person. Oh, okay. Uh, should that be? No. So I think. Um, Joshua. Yeah. Um, how many from the um from the list? How many students do we have in total? Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, yeah, but how many students were in attendance today? Uh, I think uh, we have 18 or less. I think 18. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, Leslie, you could, you could go ahead and start then. Okay. Okay. Question one Blank is part of a group being surveyed. And also know you're being timed. So after yeah. the time, they should know yeah. that the factor. Yeah. You have five seconds left. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good job, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question two. One way to examine whether two variables might be linearly related is to construct A. Now you get it right, the better for you. <laughs> I found that out. Okay. Who's winning, Michael? Okay, Michael, you win. Let's go. <laughs> Question three, correlation analysis is used to determine the Ten seconds. Okay. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, good one, Cindy. <laughs> Next question. The acronym STEM stands for science, blank, engineering, and blank. Three seconds. Everybody got this right. Good for everybody. <laughs> okay, next one. What is the mean of this data? You should calculate layers for the past. <laughs> Oh, well, so I think I, uh, nice one, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> okay, what is the median of the following data? Okay. Nice. Good one, Titi. I'm coming back up. <laughs> Which two are examples of descriptive statistics? Okay. Good job. <laughs> Next one. What is the range of the following data?
Okay, right answer was 14. Okay. How many years ago was I drunk founded? Hopefully you all paid attention to the video. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. The okay, Adrian was founded 40 years ago, okay. Okay, good job, Tinigo. And Simdi is not giving her credit. Which city was named as the world's first smart city in 2014? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Almost that one. Which kind of information is not collected by ITRAN? That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay last question everyone which country has less than five percent of the world's population but consumes nearly one fifth of the world uh, of the world's energy resources It's a very tricky question. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, let's see the winner. Okay, so oh, we'll yeah. Good job. Good job, guys. Good job, Sonia. And, uh, <laughs> good job, <Nice>. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Stop sharing. I don't know if Dr. Awa has something to say or E2, Josh. Okay, um, that is the uh, video stuff. Yeah, the video is on. Yeah. I, I still see the SOP camp on it. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, they're still there. Yeah. Okay. So, thanks everybody for the first day of the camp. Um, like, you know, this is the first time we're doing the online or uh, virtual uh, part of it. So we have some lots of plans. You know, so by uh, next Saturday, we'll have uh, more fun. We are still in transition. So it's going to be a better start. So all the assignments that you guys were given, please make sure you do it and uh, get your parents involved. Don't do it by yourself. Please make sure you get your parents involved in it. Um, on the issue on the um, projects, you need to give, give us a, send us a feedback, which choice you, you've made. Uh, don't wait until the last date to get it or the due date to send it the information. So because the sooner you send it, the, the sooner we can start planning accordingly, okay? So anybody has any questions for today? Any questions today? I see someone, yeah. Yeah, please go ahead and ask. Any questions? Um, where do we send the, uh, where, what project we do? Okay. So, um, go ahead. Okay, 
So a project link has been, a link has been sent to your parents. So ask them to check their email. They would see a link there where they can select um, a, whatever project you want to um, do. So just ask them for the email that was sent to them and they would um, give that to you. We would still resend the email again today so they could see it. Yeah. Always let your parents know before you do anything on this, okay? Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, so we're looking forward to seeing you guys uh, on Saturday. And uh, if you have anything interesting, let us know, or something that you want to know about, okay? Tomorrow, next, next week will be better than today. Very, very interesting things we have for you guys. Okay, though? Any more questions? Any questions from the parents? Okay. When are the projects due? Um, excuse me? When are the projects um, due? Like, when are we supposed to turn them in? Oh, yeah, they, you're going to do a final presentation on the, on the last day. Uh, all these things have been communicated That's, in the email, right, right? July, yeah, July 18th. So on July the last 18th. day, last day, July 18th. Yeah. Right. Because you're going to make a presentation. Okay. Uh, if you're in a group, you make a, a group presentation. If you're, you know, doing a project by yourself, you're going to make a presentation on that. But uh, we're going to show you how to do a presentation using the PowerPoint. You know, last time we did it uh, on the uh, poster because we were meeting face to face. Now we are doing the uh, online. So I think the best, you know, way to do it is using the, the PowerPoint. So we're going to show you guys that most likely next week. Okay. So, um, Brian? also to um, address your question um, and also I think it also relates to um, Chung, and Chung and Lee. So a group means a family. So if you're if you have two siblings or three siblings you all have to come together as a team and select one project. So if you're just the only person here in your family so you you're going to do an individual project. So one child in one family uh, individual project, two children or three children from one family would be a team uh, project. Um, oh, yeah. Um, are we allowed to use Google Slides or is it only um, PowerPoint that we're allowed to use? You can also use Google Slides if you want to okay. use Google Slides for, for it. Yeah. Okay. Presentation. Yeah. yeah. If we have um, family members, do we have to work with them? Or can we choose to work by ourselves? Must it be a group project? Yeah, if you have family members, you have to work with them. So right. that way you can give that team relationship and um, things like that. So <clears throat> the, the idea is to also teach you guys how to work as a team. I think although you are family, you are siblings, you know, obviously. You, but uh, even some sometimes some siblings don't uh, know how to work in teams. So this is an opportunity for you to. To collaborate but okay. one thing that is important is that you have to get your parents involved okay so say hey daddy mommy please i want to have a please you know come and help us do this so that's how you get your parents involved but be very nice when you ask you have to ask them nicely no all right all right Any questions Oh. Go ahead. Um, we have a question. So, are we are the teams able to like be split up? If we have more than like four people participating in our family, can there be two teams instead of a huge group of four? Yeah, I think I think that yeah yeah that that would be okay. Yeah, if you have okay. if you have four or five people, mm -hmm. yeah, you guys can split up into two different teams. So, but when you, um, when you do the project selection um, from the link we sent, you want to specify it there um, in the project mm -hmm. selection. So yeah, who is group one and which team is group two. So that way is better. Adana, is that you? Uh, yes, thank oh, you. Okay, you are. Any other questions? 
Okay. So, right. see everybody next week. And have a good day. Stay safe. And be nice to your parents, okay? So they can help you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.